Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well. In this session, I want to cover uh, something from the Functools module, and in particular, the partial function. This one's interesting because it's not one that I would argue that is that super commonly used, but it has some really interesting properties and some rather fascinating use cases. Uh, so to cut straight to the chase, effectively, you're going to be using it if you're in this situation here. Suppose you're making frequent calls to a built-in function, and you're always using some of the same inputs, then partial can be really good to do this. Effectively what it does, it allows you to kind of fix some arguments in place with a given function. It then gives you a chance to pass in the remaining arguments later on. Suppose you have a function that takes in A, B, C, uh, A and B are the same like 90% of the time, and you're only ever passing in C as a new value. It effectively lets you say, go and call this function, fix A and B in place, and I'm just going to worry about passing in C myself later on. So yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's not something you're going to be using every single day, um, but if you're trying to kind of master the basics of Python, then it's a good one to kind of have in your arsenal of tools. So for this video, I want to show how to do this using a simple uh, user define function. Uh, but where I think this really comes into its own is with the built-in functions, because you know, if you're doing a user define function and using partial, that's probably not a well-designed function if you're using the, you know, the same inputs like half the time, you could just use default arguments for that function. Uh, so to kick things off, let's just do def add x, y, you're going to keep it as simple as humanly possible here, and return x plus y here. So I've got a simple function and there, it's happy. Uh, and now I want to say from func tools, import partial here. And before I run this, I'm also going to just quickly do print the directory of partial. The directory function returns all methods and attributes of an object. In this case here, I would expect to see. Uh, let's hit run. There we go. And the things I, I'm interested in are these here, args, func, and keywords. So when we call the partial function, we pass it a function, you can pass it some arguments, you can pass it some keyword arguments, and we can basically see, okay, what is partial being called on and what's it being called on with? So I'll make sure to show these in just a minute's time here. Now, the way we're going to set partial up here is as follows. I'm going to set up a variable called partial add and then call the partial function. And we can see it wants, the, as its first argument, a func here. Yeah, so in this case, anything callable. So in this case, my add function is, of course, that's callable. And we can pass in args and then keyword args here. So if I was to do, let's just try x equals 10 here. So now that's set up to kind of a basic point, uh, we can go ahead and look at the func, the args, and the keywords here. So I'll do partial add dot func, partial add dot args, and then partial add dot keywords here. And just to show you something, I also want to quickly do, it might seem unrelated, I want to print off add here at the bottom just to show you something. Um, okay, so partial add dot func. So of course we passed in add. So you know this partial object has an add attribute, this function. And check out this, look at the memory address, and then look at the memory address of the add function. They're the same here. So because we've given the partial function this add here, um, it's kind of stored this function ready to call. And we can see, yeah, it's stored the add function there. Uh, for the arg section, we've got this as blank at the moment. But if I was to do the following, let's take this 10 or the x off here. We can see that we've now got args as 10 here. Uh, of course, that said keyword, because I pass this in as a keyword argument. There we go. So in this case here, we can see we've passed in this function and we've passed in a keyword argument, x is equal to 10 here. So all that's missing now really is us calling this partial object and saying, you've got the function, you've got one of the arguments, now go off and do the full thing with this additional argument. So I'm gonna clear this guy here, uh, clear the screen down there as well. What we'll do, we'll set up a variable and we will do partial add now, because our function has already been given x, it's satisfied in that way, uh, it's still missing y. So we need to say y is equal to 100. And then underneath here, we can print off, not reversed, we can print off result there. And let's see what happens. And we get 110. Um, let me show you with, if I was to run it like this here. So if I just did, um, this is 10. It also works as well. Uh, the only way, it, obviously, it wouldn't work, if I was to do y is equal to 10 here, and run this. In this case here, yeah, it's it's missing this x here because I passed in y here and passed in y there. 
it's not going to work. So just, uh, I guess, just be careful. That's kind of the message there, really. Um, if your initial partial call course calls this parameter, just make sure that your subsequent call then passes in the rest here. Um, so what that means we can do is stuff like this. So suppose in this case, in some odd world, this add function is always being called with x being equal to 10. But then we want to come along and then pass in some different values for this value of y here. Uh, so we could set up a simple for loop and do the following here. Uh, in fact, we'll, we'll just print this here, will we? We'll print the partial add of y. We'll quickly switch our y equal to i here. And there we go. So one more time, let's just kind of suss out what's happening here. We have a basic function add, which takes in x and y. This partial, this call to this partial function here, accepted a function add. And we said, make sure this function is ready to go with x being equal to 10. So kind of imagine, imagine this kind of being like spring loaded with x as 10. So almost like, you know, if I was to kind of just mock this up down below here, it's, I know you can't do your keyword arguments first, but it would be something like akin to that, right? It was saying this is preset, so leave it as it is. We're only interested in whatever's passed in as y here. That's kind of what we're doing. And then inside our for loop, we're just saying, cool, now go and finish off the rest of the function call and then pass in three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on and so forth. Um, but of course, you know, this example is just to sort of show how it works at like a super low level. Um, generally, if you're doing it with user-defined functions, you would just do them as like fixed parameters up here like this as your default arguments. Uh, where this really comes into its own is when we're looking at built-in functions. So we'll clear the screen and we'll take a look at a couple of neat examples of where you might use this. So our first example is going to be the built-in power function here. Uh, if I quickly open up the dump string, we can see it takes base, and uh, exponentiation, and then we have some mod as well. Uh, I'm going to just worry about the base and the exp here. So of course, all it's doing is raising this to the power of this. So uh, let's just do a quick demo here. If I was to do 10 and the free, and we go ahead and hit run, there we go. Uh, okay, so we can see we're raising 10 to the power of three to get a thousand. You can do, uh, to be honest, you could even pass them in like that, and that'll be fine. You could pass them in as keyword arguments. So we could say, here's the base, here's the exponent, and we get exactly the same thing here. Now, what if you were in a situation where suppose this is staying the same or this is staying the same here. So if you're you know, using Python for any kind of mathematics and maybe you're always using the same base or exponent, that might be a good use case for partial because we could say partially fill this in with, I don't know, uh, let's say the, the base is 100 and then we know we're then doing this to varying degrees later on. So let's try and set that up and I'll show you what this might look like. So I've got partial already imported. So all I want to do here uh, it's set up a variable. We'll call this partial pow, and this will eventually become our callable. Uh, we can then go ahead and invoke the partial here, and we can see the first thing we want is our func. That's going to be pow, and followed by our args or our keyword arguments here. Um, I'm going to be good. I think, personally, I think it's better to use the keyword arguments here. Um, it just gives, you know, especially if someone else is using this code, um, especially if they're not familiar with what partial does, I, it's probably best to use the keyword arguments, at least that way they can see what's going on. Um, and we'll define a base as let's try 15 here. And there we go. Let's just hit run, make sure that Python is happy, and it absolutely is here. Um, so now what we could do, now we've set up our partially called function, uh, we'll iterate over a loop here. So we'll do for i in range, let's do, that shouldn't be too big of a number, should it? Let's try that. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five inside this here. And we can do print uh, partial power. There we go. And we're going to pass in i here. In fact, what we can do, uh, we all do exp is equal to this here. Again, I think it's just one of those things. It just makes it clearer. Uh, you know, if your code becomes slightly unreadable, it's not. Yeah, it's not going to do anyone any favors, especially yourself when you try and revisit it in in some time and you forget what this argument is here. So in this case here, I think this is pretty straightforward. We can see in this case we've said go ahead and look at the power function and set it up with a base of fifteen here. So then all we then do in our loop is say okay, now finish off that call to the power function and pass in the the exponent as one two three four five, and we see our results down here 
all nice and happy. So yeah, pretty straightforward example. But again, if you know this is more for, I guess, if you're doing anything kind of maths heavy with Python, um, you know, perhaps you're using the same base, same exponent. Uh, the partial function here could be a bit of a time saver for you. Uh, right, let's move on to a second example and we'll clear the screen. And this time we're gonna be looking at the print function. Now we all know the print function. Uh, you know, we probably use it every day if we're coding in Python every day. And we can see it takes in a number of different things here. So this star values, of course, this is basically saying if you're passing comma separated uh, strings, variables, whatever, it's gonna print them all off here. But of course you can pass in a separator to say how to separate those items. Um, you can pass in an end as well. Normally this is flushed out as like the, this new line symbol here. Um, but suppose what if you were kind of writing some program and you want to output all your things to exactly the same line. So, you, you know, you could do that. You could do something like uh, one, two, three, and then say separate this, oh, I don't know, let's see, with a da with this little dashy thing as well. So, you know, you could do this. Um, you could then come along and do hello here, like that. So that would be absolutely fine. Yeah, so, so see how rather than separating with this comma instead, We've told the print function, use this as your method of separation. We could fix this with partial. So we could say, fix this in place. And for the remainder of the program, um, print is gonna do, and it's gonna do its printing in this way because I've fixed this in place. Um, so we'll go ahead and try that. And you might wanna call it pprint, I don't know. <laughs> call it whatever you want. Um, and we'll do partial, we'll give it the print function. And now we wanna give it the keyword argument. So I'm gonna say, take this as your keyword argument, and off you go. And now because print, print's a bit interesting, isn't actually, but well, it returns a value of none, but it's the way it does like sys.standard out. So you could just literally do preprint, uh, make sure I get the correct number of P's in there, that'll probably help. And we could just do yes, one, two, three, um, I'll do a boolean true, I'll do a couple of things in here. And check out how cool that is. So, you know, that's pretty cool, isn't it? You know, if you were trying to do lots and lots of different calls to print, you know, just by doing this once at the top here, you know, we're not then doing sep equals dash 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 for every subsequent call to print. Um, and to me, I think this is where it really comes in useful. Um, again, I'll kind of reiterate it from earlier. If your user defined functions, I don't think this works super well. Um, because you could just fix things like this in a user defined function just using kind of like a default parameter. This really comes into play if for some reason in your code you're having to change the default behavior of a function such as um, like print, len, min, max, sum, um, pow, like we saw earlier. So, yeah, just want to bear in mind. To be completely honest, it's not something I use every day. Um, but, you know, it's, it is something I use a couple of times a month. And, you know, whenever, whenever I do get a chance to use it, it's always quite enjoyable. It kind of feels like you're hacking apart these built-in functions, which is always quite cool. Um, but yeah, that's that one, guys. Cheers for watching, and I hope this comes uh, of some use in your Python journey. Have a great week, and I'll see you all in the next video.